Hi, out of this binary, it's Joe Progo. Good morning, good Saturday. It is morning, Saturday morning currently right now. I actually like got up at 10 and I'm having breakfast. So we're gonna have breakfast and talk about safe spaces together. My breakfast is um, gluten-free bagels, dairy-free cream cheese with a little cinnamon on top. I've never had either of these before. It's an amazing experience today. Also coffee, but only decaf, because caffeine makes me more tired than being tired makes me tired. This week we're talking about safe spaces, so I feel like what I have to say is similar to what other people have had to say, um, that I haven't experienced a lot of safe spaces, um, and even like going to safe spaces doesn't usually feel all that safe. I don't know if it's because I have PTSD and so life doesn't feel safe. That's a different topic though. Yeah, safe spaces. I guess like what a safe space would feel like for me if I if there was one, like if I'd found one, I guess. The basics are just like respect people's identities, use their pronouns and chosen name. It's like not engaging in like racism and ableism and homophobia and transphobia and sexism. Um, like it's all of those things are needed to make a safe space and it's hard to find a place that respects all of that. In like trans safe spaces that I've tried to go to, um, it's usually not very non-binary friendly. Um, I've gone to one group that was just for, um, it was really just to, like for people transitioning from uh, females to males that I don't like how that How do you say that better? It was a group for people transitioning from girls to boys, girl to bo man to wo woman to man. It's hard to speak today. More coffee. And at the time I wasn't sure what my gender was and um, but like it didn't feel, I definitely didn't feel like there was really an option for me to be it was like if I was trans, I had to be a boy, and I'm not, but I'm trans. So, in, and that's kind of my experience with like trans safe spaces is that it's safe if you are, it's safe, it's like they're safe if you're a white trans man. And if you're not that, it's hard, it gets harder to find safe spaces. So that's hard. It's also hard because I don't, I have an itch and that makes it hard. Safe spaces are a challenge too because I don't like crowds in general. I don't like groups of people. Um, it takes, I, unless I like know everybody in that group really, really well, I'm not usually comfortable. And part of that is because like in a group of people, it's hard to know who is like actually a safe person to talk to and who is like not a safe person to talk to. So. Yeah, something that I do in my own life though, for that I've been focusing on for the last couple of years is like making my own self and my own life safe for me. So instead of like going out and finding and trying to find safe spaces, I guess, I've been focused on creating my own for myself. So that's been like working on my own language, trying to make sure that I am that I'm not using ableist language or racist language or transphobic or homophobic or sexist, any of those things, like trying to make sure that I'm not using that those words against me or against anybody else in my own head even, like, which is a really difficult process to change language. So like I've been trying to stop using words like crazy or insane, like those are ableist words that when I use them, I know if I'm saying that I feel crazy, it usually is me like trying to write off my own feelings instead of trying to figure out what I really am feeling. Because usually it's totally valid and sane and like normal to have the feelings that I have for the situations that I'm in. So by changing my own language about myself, like it feels like I'm more safe in my own head and that feels nice. I also have been working hard on making my home a safe space. So that includes like talking to my partner if something is upsetting to me, like if language is used, and she does this to me too, like if we say something that's fucked up, we're like, hey, that was fucked up. 
we should talk about it. And then down to like, we're moving now because it, we're up, we're not in a safe space here in our own house. So we have been working really hard on trying to get to move and now we finally get to next week. So that will greatly help in safe spaces, I think. I guess the most real safe spaces I found have been on the internet. So like this channel feels like a safe space to me because everybody's respectful of one another and, and people are really kind in the comments mostly and that's really great. So it feels like a safe space here. Tumblr sometimes feels, there are like safe spaces on Tumblrs and great blogs and places to interact with others and those feel really safe and respectful and we can have discourse about like we can talk about things that make us feel unsafe or things that make us angry and like instead of fighting about it it's like we can talk about it maybe that's just because it's written down and i can follow written down better than like in-person conversations so the internet has been really helpful that's my favorite place to go for if i'm having a day and i need to connect with other trans people who are like me i'll go to the internet because on the internet like non-binary people are everywhere I don't know why in the real world people say that like, oh, there aren't very many of you because I'm like, well, just go on the internet. We're everywhere. That was a tangent. I really like to imagine what a safe space would look like in person. And I just imagine like, I guess what I was saying earlier, like being careful about language. But even beyond that, like a safe space to me feels like a place where nobody is written off and it's like where everybody gets to speak and where the words that people say are genuinely listened to. And that's like a lot to ask and doesn't happen very often. But to me, I'm like, that's what a safe space would feel like as if it was in a place where like everybody got to exist as their own self and we got to learn about one another, but because we really genuinely cared. I think safe spaces feel like genuine care, like I've got your back, you've got my back, and so obviously we're not going to say fucked up shit to each other, or if we do, we're going to talk about it. And that's what a safe space would feel like to me, I think. What would a safe space feel like to you? And have you experienced it in real life or on the internet? The internet's totally real life. What if a solar flare happened and the internet was gone? I've been reading dystopian fiction lately. It's real. Okay, that's all I've got. I'm gonna go finish eating my delicious breakfast and edit this and pack, because I have to move. I hope you all have wonderful Saturdays. Can't wait to see what you say in the comments below. This has been Joe for Out of the Spinery, and I'll see you next weekend. Yes, bye. Ooh.